lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. In this episode of Math Mondays, we are going to review polarization. We will also dig a little deeper into dipole moments because polarization relies on dipole moments and I might have skipped that topic. So we'll look at that and then we'll look at how our exploration of polarization can let us ask and seek answers to different types of questions about materials that are non-conducting or dielectric materials. All right, so here we go. Our exploration of polarization resulted from the question of what happens when we have a non-conductive material or a dielectric material in an external electric field. We looked at two situations, neutral atoms and polar molecules like water, which already have some of its charges separated. So before we get into that, well, actually, let's look at the neutral atom first. Change my mind midway. So a neutral atom has a nucleus at the center and an electron cloud around it. And when we have an external electric field, da -da -da, the nucleus is positively charged because of protons. It'll move slightly in the direction of the electric field and the electron cloud will shift in the opposite direction slightly. And so for simplicity, let's just say that the electron is there for now. Um, and we have a separation of charges that is now induced. Oopsies. Like that. Um, so minus Q and plus Q. So this is a dipole moment when you have charges that are separated. And to make it easier to visualize, we're gonna zoom in and flatten it out. So let's say we have a positive Q here, positive charge here and a negative charge with magnitude Q here. Um, and there is a force between the two and they are separated by a distance D. Um, I'm going to call this vector D and say that it points from the positive charge to the negative charge. Um, the dipole moment, lowercase p, is defined uh, as the magnitude of the charge times this uh, separation or this distance vector. So in other words, the dipole moment gives us some information about the magnitude and the distance between the two charges. For a, a pair of charges, the, uh, the potential scales as one over r squared. Okay, so this is what a dipole moment is. It's really just a simple way of saying that there are two charges that are separated. Um, you can also apply this to three, four, and more charges. Uh, the, the electric potential will scale differently for those, um, depending on the uh, geometry of the situation. But the dipole moment just gives us some information about how big those charges are, that's what this Q factor is, and how far apart they are, and uh, kind of in what orientation they are, hence why it's a vector. Cool, okay, so uh, for neutral atoms, we know that an external electric field will induce this separation of charges. It will induce a teeny tiny dipole moment. For polar molecules like water, which we looked at, which already have uh, charges separated, there are already dipole moments within um, the water molecule, for example. When we place an external electric field um, and we put the water molecule in this, the water molecule will feel a torque and it will want to align itself with the external electric field. So in both situations, we have a bunch of teeny tiny dipole moments that are induced or caused by the external electric field. Um, one little caveat for polar molecules, uh, you do actually have um, some competition with uh, thermal motion, so the molecules are buzzing around um, because they have some temperature, they have some energy, and so this thermal motion tends to counter uh, this torque due to the external electric field, um, and 
the higher the temperature, the more it's countered. And as soon as you remove the electric field, uh, this alignment will revert back. But we still have a bunch of teeny tiny dipole moments, both in neutral atoms and in polarized molecules. So what we would say is that in both situations, the molecules or the materials, we want to talk about bigger scale, the materials are polarized. The charges that make up the material, or the charges that are in the material, because all atoms are made up of charges. Well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, yeah, we can say that for now. Um, all atoms are made up of, of charges. Um, these materials are polarized. Okay, so we can then define a quantity because we want to be lazy. Capital P, which I'm going to add a little bottom to so that I can differentiate between my lowercase p and capital P. So we are going to define this as the dipole moment per unit volume. And mathematically speaking, what that means is that we just um, add up all of these dipole moments over the volume of interest. And that is how we get the total polarization of the material of interest. And so this definition will allow us to ask some new questions, like what happens when you have a polarized molecule? Does it then have an, its own electric field? Yes, it does. Super cool. So uh, that's what we will look at next. Um, and then we will start to get into um, electric displacement, which is a fun topic. Okay, so I hope that this helps. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions about polarization um, or dipole moments. Super cool topics. Electric fields are so fun. All right, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.